musical force Tori Amos is back, and it seems this time she's ready to bear it all. Airplanes take you away again. The Grammy-nominated artist has released a new album, The Beekeeper, and a book about her life entitled Piece by Piece. I know that along with the sweet comes the sting. I understand that, and maybe that's what writing the book and the record was one would become one and one would become the other depending on the day. Far from being a traditional rock star biography, Piece by Piece is a series of conversations between Amos and New York Times music critic Ann Powers. The book sheds light on the singer-songwriter's long career, one that began in 1992 with an album called Little Earthquakes. In 1992 or so when Tori first came on the musical scene, you know, grunge was certainly having its heyday. You're at the height of the alternative scene, and she comes out as a singer-songwriter. Madonna and Melissa Etheridge have come through the 80s, and now Tori Amos is coming to the forefront. You're having the, the Riot Girl phenomenon. Um, you're having Sarah McLachlan also coming to the forefront later on with Lila Fair. So she's coming uh, to the musical scene at a, at a point where feminism is redefining itself. Boston Phoenix music editor Matt Asher. Initially, she was just viewed as kind of a Kate Bush ripoff, to be honest with you. I, I mean, a lot of people who disparaged her, that's what they would say. Her lyrics were so, I don't know if I want to call them confrontational, but they dealt with sexuality. Even if it was just a line or two in a song. I've been looking for a savior in these dirty streets. Looking for a savior beneath these dirty sheets. And then you add to that the fact that she, you know, kind of, when she performed live, she essentially straddled the piano bench. And, you know, it was just very sexual. It might have excited the boys, but it also made the girls feel very empowered. And I think that that was really where her core audience started to build and develop this just really deep and loyal cult audience. When I'm on stage, I realize that at that point in time, the writing of the stories has happened and I'm taking them forth in order to come alive in a way, in a tangible form, and have a conversation with people. And I can feel a song speaking directly to somebody. I can't see them, I cannot see. It's dark for me, the lights are in my face. But the songs are directing and scanning. She knows what's going on. Seems about a cheaper feel now. All the sweet trees are gone. I don't do the other side with my encyclopedia. So they are relating to people that, that I don't know. And this is where the songs have always told me it's really none of your business, Tori, what we're doing. Just do your gig. You go, yeah, okay, fine. Amos has often put her deep feminist philosophy and her personal angst into her work. On the album Little Earthquakes, she wrote the song Me and a Gun, a story of her rape by a fan when she was 22. Boys for Pele was a rumination about men and love following the breakup of a seven-year relationship with her producer at the time. And she drew upon the suffering she endured through three miscarriages in From the Choir Girl Hotel. It's part of that honesty, the, the honesty about this is what happens out there. She's got this poetic sensibility, married to sexuality, married to spirituality. All of these things come into play, and part of it is her Cherokee background. Obviously, her mother was a feminist that's given her a strong literary background. Her father was a Methodist minister, so she's brought up in this sort of controlled environment. She's, she's definitely going for personal freedom, and yet at the same time, you know, here she is, a, a wife, a mother, 
um, a, a believer in the good things. Not. I was imprinted by Christianity. That was my upbringing. No different if you're Islamic. And for 21 years, every day, you were reading from the Quran, or it was being read to you, and it was part of your teaching. That's part of who you are. You can't get away from that. It was very much about the matriarchy of the beekeeper, the patriarchy of Christianity. I needed a mirror, and I needed a marriage. And that was the root of this tree. To sail like a good book, I can put this deeper, a sort of fairy tale with you. Ultimately, what it is about Tori Amos, I think, that is unique and, and what's made her such a lasting career artist is that she has a sound that just has a very direct emotional appeal. You don't have to be listening to exactly what she's singing about. You don't really have to pay attention to the individual parts. Her best songs draw you in just kind of in a whole body sort of way. And they're very sensual. Uh, there's a ver there are very sexy elements to what she does. The best soul music does that, and, you know, the best rock music does that in different ways. When I'm creating, quote-unquote, I have a discipline. I put an effort into playing music every day. So I can't tell you that the muse is going to come and wrap her arms around me at, you know, 2.15, but I can tell you that Little worlds get created inside, and you seem to be talking to, it's the voice of the universe music. And so, once I do that every day, then I begin to see, oh, that's not good, that's not good, there it is. Now that has something. I don't know a lot about this. I must tell you, I know some clearly, but to define the muse, I can't do that. I try to show people the process. But you know, she's abundant. She, he, them, all of it. It is, it is endless.